Kowalski. Hi, and welcome to our how-to series. We are kicking off January with a huge challenge. So stay tuned, you'll hear more about that, and you'll want to check our blog. I'm Emily, one of our dietitians, and I'm introducing Susan, who is joining us um, to bring you this event. We are going to really do a fun thing this year, and we're going to bring to you the plant-based plant -based side of nutrition as well as our traditional side. Um, Susan's specialty and passion is on that plant-based eating, and we really encourage you to develop and having the moderation and balance of all foods, and she'll be able to help you do that. So kicking off this seven-day home cook challenge, we are bringing to you today a traditional burger as well as a veggie burger. Uh, and one thing that Susan has taught me um, when it comes to the cooking piece is that it does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be gourmet. It just has to taste good. <laughs> so if it doesn't look the prettiest, it's not that bad. Um, but we want to show you how easy it is to actually kick that off. Fantastic. So I'm going to get started with the veggie burger. So first we're going to use um, almonds as our base. Once they get put in the food processor, they become really flaky. So it's really easy to make that all come together. So we've got some almonds, also some garlic. Then we're adding sun-dried tomatoes and green onion. These really bring that flavorful umami kick that just makes it taste really satisfying. Mm -hmm. So um, it's awesome. A big thing with um, sun-dried tomatoes, a lot of the ones you'll find at the store are like that hard kind. So either if they're really hard and like not malleable, soak them in hot water for just a couple seconds and it'll make them a lot easier to work with. Or just the ones like at Trader Joe's that are in really small slivers, those are perfect to add to this. You don't have to do any pre-soaking. So we're adding um, sun-dried tomatoes and green onion. You guys um, can't smell this. It's pretty through the video, intense. but it smells really good. <laughs> We've also got some tomato paste, and that's going to bring um, a nice salty binder in it as well. So especially when we're working with plant-based burgers, it's really important to that they don't fall apart, so we bring in a lot of binders. Um, also, this rice is pretty sticky, too. This is just a combo of brown rice, um, millet, and red lentils, just in one of the um, packs at Trader Joe's. So you can kind of mess with um, different kinds of grains. If you don't use rice, you can use quinoa, so a lot of easy things going on here. And then we've got a blend of spices. So we have um, some dried rosemary, we have balsamic vinegar, and soy sauce. The soy sauce is nice and salty, so it brings that flavor that we want when we're having a delicious burger. So all of that goes in like so. And then we add this to the food processor. Um, so food processor, it kind of looks like an overwhelming machine, but really when you're doing plant-based nutrition, this is one of the easiest ways to manipulate vegetables. So a good food processor and a good blender are two of the kitchen workhorses that I love to use. So we just snap that puppy on. Plug your ears. Plug your ears. We'll go. So really it all comes together really nicely. Um, we'll blend it in for longer when you're doing this at home, but pretty much everything gets wound in together. Just blend it well, shape it with your hands, and then you get a nice, simple burger like so. Sun-dried tomato burgers. We'll have that recipe available just like anything else. I'm showing you the flip side of for your traditional meat eaters. We have got, um, it's Ellie's recipe actually, it's her beef takia, it's her famous, I will not come to one of their parties unless she makes them <laughs> burgers, it's fantastic, you think what's the big deal, it's just a burger, but it's about what goes in with it. So your binders are important, obviously you start with your pound of ground beef, I chose 90-10, um, your loin versus your ground beef cut is going to be a much leaner cut. Um, so you may actually have to add some more fat back into it if you get a very lean burger because, well, you want it to still taste good. Um, so we've got our burger, you add in one cracked egg. And yes, my hands are going to get messy. Um, most people use breadcrumbs for their binder. I am a huge, huge proponent of regular whole rolled um, oats. If you don't like the whole oat, you can also grind that in that wonderful blender um, to get it into that oat flour if you want more of that breadcrumb consistency. You've got one chopped onion, and you guys have heard me talk all about how I cannot stand chopping anything. I will bite anything pre-chopped you can possibly think of and onion is one of them. Saves time, especially if you're into batch cooking and preparing. Um, and then we've got two tablespoons of parsley as well as about a teaspoon of oregano here to add some flavor. Um, and the spices obviously can mix and change and do what you want. And you are really going to just dig your fingers in there. If you got your little ones, this is one of the places they could help unless you don't want them flinging it across the room. <laughs> but it's a very important step to make sure everything is all meshed together. On the same side of not liking to chop anything, you know I also hate washing dishes. You can see this broiler pan that I've got sitting right here lined with foil. Why? Because I don't want to deal with the mess. Um, so I usually line the bottom as well as the top. And 
and the broiler pan will allow any of those fat drippings to come off and keep that burger nice and lean for you. And you will just go ahead and take everything out. And the other great thing about your burger is you can make them as big or small as you want, but putting them in the oven on the broiler pan, you will want them as uniform as possible, otherwise you will have some cook longer than others. So you want to make it into that ball first. And again, I'm not about making it pretty, so don't worry about trying to be gourmet. You just get that nice shape. And all of the oats, the onion, the egg, and the spices help to bind it. And it just goes right on that broiler pan. And yes, I have icky hands now, so it's okay. So I will have Susan lift up my wonderful regular burger. Voila, she did an awesome job. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So make sure to tune into our blog to learn more about the seven day home cook challenge. We have some great prizes. We have full seven day menu plans as well as the recipes included. So follow us on Facebook and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Thanks.